In this lesson, we are going to study quantified statements. Let us consider the following, x squared equals 4 and she is a reporter. In our previous video lecture, we have seen that these sentences are not statements because of the presence of variables. We have here x and she. We do not know what she is referring to and we do not know the value of the variable x. We will not be able to determine the truth value unless we know the values of these variables. In this video lecture, we will explore ways to convert this type of sentence into a statement. First, let us discuss open sentences or predicates. A sentence that has at least one variable in it is called a predicate or an open sentence. When specific values are substituted for every variable, then it becomes a statement. So hence, these two examples here are open sentences. This will only become statements when we substitute specific values for it. Those values that may be substituted for a particular variable are the elements of the domain set of that variable. So for example, in the first one, we can let D, this is the domain, we can let D to be the set of all real numbers. And for this one, we can set the domain to be the set of women working at, let's say, GMA. For this one, if x equals 1, then x squared equals 4 is false. This is now a statement. An open sentence that contains a variable x is typically represented by p of x. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss open sentences with exactly one variable only. For open sentences containing two or more variables that will be covered in our second video lecture. Let us consider the following. Suppose that our open sentence is this one. The natural number x is a prime number and our domain is the set of all real numbers. What is the truth value of p of x? The answer here is none because p of x is not a statement. It is just an open sentence. What about the truth value of p of 3? If we have p of 3, this one becomes the natural number 3 is a prime number. This statement is true. What about the truth value of p of 4? For p of 4, this will mean that 4 is a prime number. And we know that this is false. Let's have another example. Suppose that p of x is equal to x squared is equal to 9 and our domain is a set of integers. What is the truth value of p of 3 and p of negative 3? For both of this, these statements are true because 3 squared equals 9 and negative 3 squared is equal to 9. However, if x is any integer not equal to 3 or negative 3, the truth value of p of x is false. Let us now discuss truth sets. Let p of x be an open sentence with domain d. The subset of d consisting of all such values that make the open sentence true is called the truth set for the open sentence. I will denote this set. This is not standard. This is just our notation by t sub p. Take note that p here is not a proposition or a statement. This is an open sentence. So this is the set of all x in the domain of the open sentence such that p of x is true. So meaning to say if this is our d, the domain of your open sentence, and this is our t sub p, p of x will be true as long as you are inside this truth set outside p of x is going to be false. Take note that the truth set of an open sentence does not only depend on the open sentence, it also depends on the domain. 
So for example, this is our open sentence, absolute value of x is equal to x. Let us find the truth set of p of x if the domain are given as follows. If the domain is the set containing negative 2, negative 1, 1 and 2, what is our truth set? The sentence absolute value of x is equal to x will be true if you have the values x equals 1 and x equals 2 only. So therefore, our truth set here is the set containing 1 and 2. What about if our domain is the set of all real numbers? When is it true that the absolute value of x is equal to itself? It will only be equal for all numbers which are greater than or equal to 0, right? What about if our domain is the set of negative integers? This is our set of negative integers. What will be our truth set in this case? Are there negative integers whose absolute value is equal to itself? No. So the answer is null set. So my point here is that the truth set of an open sentence depends on the, of course, the open sentence P of X and the domain. Because recall that your truth set is always a subset of your domain. So if you change your domain, it's possible that your truth set will also change. We can use logical connectives also to combine open sentences much as we can combine statements. So for example, our P of X is the statement, the sum of the interior angles of X is 180. Our domain here is a set of all triangles and Q of X is the open sentence, one of the angles of X is a right angle. If T is a right triangle, what is the truth value of P of T and Q of T? Take note that this is already a statement because we know that T is a right triangle. We are plugging in specific values. So if T is a right triangle, P of T is true. Q of T is also true. So therefore, this statement is going to be true. What if E is an equilateral triangle? What is the truth value of P of E and Q of E? Of course, P of E is still true, but Q of E is now false because in an equilateral triangle, all the angles are 60 degrees. So therefore, it will not contain a right angle. So hence, this one is false. Let us have this set of examples. Let x be our variable with domain r and suppose that our open sentences are x greater than 3 for p of x and x is less than 5. Let us find the truth set of p of x and q of x. So we want p of x to be true so that means x is greater than 3 and we want q of x to be true. We want x less than 5 to be true. So therefore, what is this set? This is the set 3, 5. Next, number 2. We want p of x or q of x to be true. So that means x is greater than 3 or x is less than 5. When we are talking about or, what do we do with these two intervals? We get their union, right? But when you get the union of these two intervals, we get that it is equal to the set of real numbers. Next, P of X implies Q of X. Now let us recall that this is going to be false only when P of X is true and the conclusion q of x is false. So this is the only case wherein it will be false. For the other cases, it will always be true. So therefore, what I will do is I will get the values of x for which p of x is true and q of x is false and then I'm going to remove it 
from the set of real numbers. So when is P of X true and Q of X is false? This is x greater than 3 and x is greater than or equal to 5. When we get and, this means that we are getting the intersection. What is the intersection of this set? That is just 5 to infinity. So hence, for our truth set, I will just write number 3. This is the set of all reals. Take away 5 to infinity and therefore this is negative infinity up to 5. Next, let us get the truth set of p of x if and only if q of x. Recall that a biconditional is true if both components have the same truth values. So therefore this will be true if you have p of x and q of x are true and if both are false. P of x is true when x is greater than 3. Q of x is true when x is less than 5. So therefore, this is the set 3, 5. For the second one, P of x is false means that x is less than or equal to 3. And Q of X is false means that X is greater than or equal to 5. What is the intersection of this two? That is the null set. And what do you do with these two sets? You combine it with OR. Because a biconditional is true if this happens or this happens. So therefore, the truth set for number 4 is... 3, 5, union the null set, which is the same as 3, 5. And for the last one, not P of X and not Q of X, I will leave it up to you as an exercise. Try that for yourself. We have seen that open sentences can be turned to statements by plugging in specific values in the variable. We can also turn open sentences to statements by using quantifiers. Let us discuss our first quantifier. We call this our universal quantifier. Let x be a variable with domain b and let p of x be an open sentence. The expression for every x in b, p of x, this is a statement. It is true if and only if P of X is true for each choice of X in D. What is this saying? This statement is true whenever the truth set of P is equal to what? It should be the entire D. So this is the same as saying that for all X in D, P of X is true. So this quantified statement is true if and only if the truth set of the open sentence is the entire domain. That is, when we are inside D, P of X is always true here. The phrase for every is referred to as our universal quantifier and we denote it by this symbol. I actually use that symbol over here. Let us determine which of the following universal statements are true. Number one, for all A in this set, the absolute value of A plus 5 is less than 10. This is our domain D and this is our statement. This contains the variable A, so this is the open sentence P of A. Since our domain is just a finite set, we can easily determine the truth values of P of negative 3, P of negative 1, P of 0, P of 1, and P of 3. You can verify that these are all true. So since P of A is true for all the values of A in your domain, this statement is true. Next, 
for all x in the set of integers, x squared is greater than 0. Again, for all x in the set of integers, so this is saying that this is a set of integers, if I get any integer here, x squared is always greater than 0. Is this true? No. If you take x to be 0, this is an integer, correct? 0 squared is not greater than 0. So, since the truth set of, this is our open sentence, p of x, this is not the entire domain, which is the set of z, it means that this statement is false. Next, for all x in the set of real numbers, if x squared is less than 0, then x is equal to 10. What is the truth value of this one? Take note that you have here a conditional. What is this? Your x here is any real number. Now, if x is any real number, what can you say about the premise x squared less than 0? This is false. Our premise is false, which means that the entire implication is true for any real number. So therefore, this quantified statement is true. In this second example, we were able to show that this quantified statement is false. How did we do it? We just showed one particular example for which the open sentence is false. We call that the counter example. So if you have a universal statement for all x, p of x, any value of x that is not in the truth set of p of x is called a counter example to the universal statement. Recall that if for all x, p of x is false, this means, so that is equivalent in saying that the truth set of p is not the entire d. Meaning to say, there is an element in D for which the open sentence P of X is false. So hence, in showing that a quantified statement for all X is false, all you need to do is to find an example. And you call that example your counter example. Let us now discuss our second quantifier. We call it the existential quantifier. Let x be a variable with domain d and p of x is another open sentence. The expression there exists x in d such that p of x is a statement. It is true if and only if p of x is true for at least one choice of x in d. We call this there exists as the existential quantifier and we denote it by the symbol there exists. So we write this as there exists x in d such that p of x. So in terms of the truth sets of p of x, this is only saying that this quantified statement is true if and only if the truth set of p is not empty. As long as you can get at least one just give me one element for which p of x is true, automatically this statement is going to be true. Let us have this example. Which of the following existential statements are true? Number one, how do you read this? There is a real number x such that x squared is less than or equal to zero. Is this statement true? Yes. All you have to do is give one example. Take x to be equal to 0. Take note that it satisfies the open sentence. 0 squared is less than or equal to 0. This one here is true. So therefore, this quantified statement is true.
Next. Number two. There exists an x in the set of integers such that 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals 0. What is this saying? This is saying that there is an integer x which satisfies this property. 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 is equal to 0. Or you can also say there is an integral solution. To the equation 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 is equal to 0. Is this statement true? If you solve for the solutions of this one, this is 2x plus 1 squared equal to 0. So the only solution is x equals negative 1 half. And this solution is not an integer. So therefore, there is no integral solution. The answer here is false. Take note that the truth value of a quantified statement depends on the domain of the variable. This is true because the truth set of an open sentence depends on the domain. So to illustrate that, suppose that p of x is x squared greater than 0 and q of x is x squared equals 2. Let us find the truth value of the following quantified statements. Number 1. For all x in the set of natural numbers, is it true that x squared is greater than 0? Take note that the set of natural numbers starts at 1. So therefore, p of x is always true in the set of natural numbers. This is true. However, if we change our domain to the set of integers, is it still true that x squared is always greater than 0? This is false and our counter example is x is equal to 0. 0 is an integer but 0 squared is not greater than 0. So p of x here is false. Again, to show that a quantified statement involving the universal quantifier is false, all we have to do is get a counter example. Next, number 3. There exists a real number x such that x squared is equal to 2. How do you write that? We are saying here that there is a real number solution to the equation x squared equals 2. Is this true? There is a real number solution to x squared equals 2? Yes, this is true because we take x to be plus or minus square root of 2 to show that a statement involving the existential quantifier is true all you have to do is to give an example for which the open sentence is true lastly number four there exists x element of z such that q of x so this one is saying that our x has to be an integer so this statement is there is an integral solution, meaning to say a solution that is an integer to the equation x squared equals 2. This is false because the only solutions are x equals plus or minus 2. There are no solutions which are integers. So for numbers 1 and 2, you have the same p of x, different domains, so you have different truth values. For numbers 3 and 4, you have the same open sentence q of x, different domains, therefore they have different truth values as well. It is very important that you can translate English sentences into symbolic statements. Let us do that for the following examples. So for number 1, for every natural number x, 2x plus 1 is greater than 0. This is the statement for every x in the set of natural numbers because you have for every natural number x and this is our open sentence 2x plus 1 is greater than 0. Is it true that for any natural number 2x plus 1 is greater than 0? Yes, this is true. In particular, 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 
2 times 1 plus 1. That's 3 because the set of natural numbers starts at 1. Correct? So in particular, 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 3. Our assumption here is that you are in the set of natural numbers. Next, number 2. For every integer x, 2x plus 1 is greater than 0. This is very much similar to number 1 except that we have a different domain. Our domain here is the set of integers. Is this quantified statement true? No. How do we show that this statement is false? If you have the universal quantifier, all you have to do is to give a counterexample. What is our counterexample? We can take x to be negative 1. When x is negative 1, you have 2 times negative 1 plus 1 is less than 0. So this one here is false. Number 3. There exists an integer x such that 2x plus 1 is less than 0. You have the existential quantifier here. There exists x and our domain is the set of integers. And this is our open sentence. 2x plus 1 is less than 0. So to show that it is true, just give an example. We can take x to be equal to negative 1. We have shown that here already. Take x to be equal to negative 1, therefore 2x plus 1 is less than 0. So this statement here is true. Next, there exists a natural number x such that x squared plus x plus 41 is a prime number. You have the existential quantifier. Our domain is the set of natural numbers. And then our open sentence is x squared plus x plus 41 is a prime number. Is this statement true? Well, we can take x to be equal to 1. If x is equal to 1, 1 squared plus 1 plus 41 is equal to 43. And this is a prime number. So therefore, this statement is true. Lastly, for every natural number x, x squared plus x plus 41 is a prime number. It's just number 4 except that we changed our quantifier to the universal quantifier. What do you think? Is this statement true or false? Take note that if we take x to be equal to 41, x squared plus x plus 41 is equal to 1,763, which is equal to 41 times 43. Therefore, this is not a prime number. Therefore, this statement is false. Let us now do the opposite of what we had earlier. This time around, we have quantified statements in symbolic form and we want to express it in the English language. So for example, this one, 1 times any integer equals that integer. Take note that to signify the for all x here, you have the phrase any integer here for the for all x and z. We can also say that the product of an integer and 1 is the integer. You can also say if x is an integer, then x is equal to x times 1. So the words that signify the universal quantifier here are any integer. Here you have an integer and then you have an integer. This denotes this part for all x element in z. Next, we have there exists x in the set of real numbers such that x is equal to x squared. We can verbalize this in three different ways. The first one is some real numbers are the square of itself. Or one can find a real number that when squared is itself. And lastly, there are real numbers that equal themselves when squared. So what are the key words when we have existential form? You can see some and then there are or there exist or just as there are multiple ways to 
verbalize quantified statements, there are also numerous ways to mathematically express a quantified statement. Suppose that D is the domain of our variable X and S is just a subset of your domain. The statement there exists X element of S, P of X, can also be expressed as there exists X, X is in S, and P of X. Here, I did not write anything. When I say there exists x automatically, it means that it belongs in the domain. So this means there exists x in D such that x is in S and P of x is true. Graphically speaking, this means that this is our domain D. This is our S. Now, there is something here in S. Let's call it small x here. The small x here is in S. And here, for this particular x, P of x is also true. However, of course, instead of doing this, we just write this. There exists an x in S such that P of x. Take note here that we limit our domain D to S. There are also cases wherein this one is more beneficial to use because it's difficult to write it in this form. We will see this in the succeeding slides. Suppose that our domain is a set of integers. Let us translate the following symbolic statements, which involve one quantifier in English, and let us find the truth values of this. So, for example, number one, there exists x such that x is in the set of natural numbers and x is prime. We can write this as there exists x in the set of natural numbers such that x is a prime. And therefore, I think this one is easier to translate in English sentence. So this one is saying that there is a natural number that is also a prime number. If we look at the Venn diagram of this, if this is the set of natural numbers and this is the set of primes, this is saying that they have something in common. We have something which is a natural number and something which is a prime. And therefore, we can also translate this as some natural numbers are prime. Is this quantified statement true or false? Yes, this is true. Why is that? Take x to be equal to 2. 2 is a natural number and 2 is prime. Next, number 2. We have there exists x. x is in the set of natural numbers and x is not in the set of rationals. I will rewrite this first as there exists x in the set of natural numbers such that x is not in Q. How do we translate this into English sentence? So that there exists x in N, we can say that there is a natural number. And for this part, x is not in Q. So we say there is a natural number that is irrational. You can also say some natural numbers are not rational. Is this statement true or false? Is there a natural number which is not rational? The answer is false. Because all natural numbers are contained in the set of rationals. You cannot find something here that is not in the set Q. Let us also do the same thing for the universal quantifier here. We are restricting our domain. The domain of the variable X is D, but the statement is only true for a certain subset of your domain. So we now say for all x in S, 
p of x. This is more natural for us. But if you really want the for all x, again, this automatically means for all x in d, we can now have this implication. If x is in s, then p of x is true. Let us now translate this to English sentences. Number one, for all x, if x is in the set of natural numbers, then x is in z. First, I will write this as for all x in the set of natural numbers, then x is in z. I am using this one instead of this one because this one is simpler. So now, how do you translate this? This means that all natural numbers are integers. You can also say every natural number is an integer. What is the truth value of this? Is it true that all natural numbers are integers? Yes, this is true. Next, number two. For all x, if x is a prime number, then x is not composite. This is the example we're in. It's better to use this form instead of the other form that is for all x element of the set of primes. And then x is not composite. This one is easier to look at. So how do we express this in English sentence? We can express this as for any real number x, if x is prime, then x is not composite. However, I do not quite like this because it still refers to variable x. When we are translating something, it's better to interpret it without mentioning the variable. So, how do we write this without mentioning the variable x? We can say that all prime numbers are not composite. You can also say that no prime numbers are composite. Because using Venn diagrams, this means that if this is the set of primes, then it's outside the set of composite numbers. So hence, all prime numbers are not composite or no prime numbers are composite. Let us now generalize this. Instead of x element of s, suppose that we really turn this into another open sentence. That is, we have this statement. If P of X and Q of X are two open sentences with domain D, what do we mean by the quantified statement for all X, if P of X, then Q of X? Take note now that this is another open sentence. When is the implication P of X implies Q of X is true? Take note that if P of X is false, automatically the implication is true but if p of x is true we cannot have q of x is false we should only have q of x must be true for the implication p of x implies q of x to be true so therefore, this means that we actually do not look at this part anymore when the premise is false because automatically the entire implication is true. So therefore, this quantified statement is true. So we will only consider the case. We only have restrictions when the premise is true. When the premise is true, the conclusion has to be true as well. So what does this mean? What can you say about the truth sets of p of x, q of x, and the domain. If you look at this one, if p of x is true, then q of x must be true. This is saying that if you are here, if you are inside the truth set of p, it must follow that q of x is true there. So that means that you should also be inside the truth set of q. And of course, they should all be subsets of D. So therefore, look at this. When is this true? 
This is true when the truth set of B is inside the truth set of Q. Or you can also view it as this. If this is the set wherein P of X is true, it should be inside the set of all elements for which Q of X is true. So that is, if P of X is true, automatically it should mean that your Q of X is true because this is inside this set. You can translate this as all P of X are Q of X. So remember that all P of X are Q of X means that for all X, if P of X, then Q of X. What are the different ways in expressing this? We can say given x in D, if P of x, then Q of x. We can also have let x be in D, if P of x, then Q of x. Or if x is an arbitrary element of D satisfying P of x, then Q of x. And lastly, if x is an element of D satisfying P of x, then Q of x. So what are the keywords that signify the universal quantifier here? You have the word given, you have let or you have x is an arbitrary element, or you can just have x is an element of D. So these are signals that you have your universal quantifier. So it is best practice to always use some words signifying the universal scope of the universal quantifier, such as this, arbitrary, any, every, all, given, or let. Let us consider the following example which involves an implication in our quantified statement. Suppose that our open sentences are P of X, X is even and Q of X, X minus 2 is even. For all X in D, our D here is the set of integers. If P of X, then Q of X. We can write this as given an integer X. Again, our domain is Z. If X is even, then X minus 2 is even. Or, let X be an integer. If X is even, then X minus 2 is even. Or, if X is an arbitrary even integer, then X minus 2 is even. Lastly, if X is an even integer, then X minus 2 is even. Let us translate the following to symbolic logic. Number one. If a real number is not zero, then its square is not zero. So you have if a real number, so that means you have the universal quantifier for all x, of course, in the set of reals. Then you have if. If it is not zero, so if x is not zero, then its square is not equal to zero. Next, the square of any rational number. So you have any rational number, so that signals the universal quantifier for all x in Q. Let us continue. What is the open sentence here? You already have x to be a rational number here. So therefore, the other open sentence is that x squared is an element of Q. Or you can also write this as for all x in the set of real numbers. If x is in Q, then x squared is in Q. Next, number three. There is a rational solution to the equation x squared plus 2x plus 1. You have the word here, there is, so that signifies there exists x. And that x is a rational number. And what is that? That rational number is a solution to this equation. So you have x squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. Next, every real solution of the equation x cubed minus x equals 0 is rational. You have every. So that signifies the universal quantifier for all x. And it says every real solution. So this is in the set of real numbers. You already have that x is a real number. What is this saying? If you are a solution of this, then you are a rational number. So you have 
x cubed minus x equals 0, that means that you are a solution of this, then x is rational. Let us determine the truth values of these four statements. For number one, is it true that if x is not equal to 0, x squared is not equal to 0? Yes, that is true for any real number. Next, is it true that if you have a rational number, then its square is also another rational number? Yes, that is also true. Next, there is a rational solution to this equation. What is the solution of this one? The solution is x equals negative 1, and that is a rational number. So therefore, the answer here is true. Lastly, you have if x cubed minus x equals 0, then x is rational. What are the solutions here? The solutions are x equals plus or minus 1 or x equals 0. Correct. x is rational. So all of these four quantified statements are true. Let us now translate the following symbolic logic statements into English. Number one, you have for all x in R. So we have for any real number. If x is greater than 1, then x cubed is greater than 1 as well. But I don't want to do that because it involves x. It's more natural to say it without mentioning the variables x. So how will we go about this? We say that for any real number greater than 1, its cube is greater than 1. So this is more natural because it did not mention any variable. Again, for any real number greater than 1, its cube is greater than 1 also. Next, number 2. There exists x in R such that x squared equals 2. So we say that there is, because you have their x, there is a real solution to the equation x squared equals 2. Number 3. For all x in the set of real numbers, if x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0, then x is equal to 1. So we can say that if, if x is a real solution to the equation x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0, then x is equal to 1. And lastly, what is this one? There exists x in Q such that this is true. So we have, there is a rational number, x such that this is true. Or we can say there, there is a rational solution to the equation 2x cubed minus x squared plus 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. Let us identify also the truth values of the following. Number 1, is it true for any real numbers that if it is greater than 1, then its cube is also greater than 1? Yes. Number 2, is there a real solution to x squared equals 2? Yes. Just take x to be equal to plus or minus square root of 2. Number three, if x is a real solution to x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0, then x is equal to 1. Yes, x is equal to 1 is the only solution of this one. And lastly, number four, there is a rational solution to this equation. Yes, we can take x to be equal to 1 half. And this is, of course, a rational number. So therefore, this statement is also true. So to end this lecture, let me just summarize the translation. So if you have the symbolic statement for all x, if p of x, then q of x. In English sentence, it means that all p of x are q of x. If you have for all x, if p of x, then not q of x, this is saying that no p of x are q of x. And for there exists, there exists 
x such that p of x and q of x, this is saying that some p of x are q of x and for there exist x, p of x and not q of x, you have some p of x are not q of x. So if you look at the Venn diagram for number one, you have this is the set where p of x is true or tp, but I will just type p of x is true. So all p of x are q of x. So this is the set q of x is true. Number two, if p of x then not q of x, this means that no p of x are q of x. So that means that the two sets are disjoint. Number three, some p of x are q of x. So this just means that they have an intersection. And then number four, some p of x are not q of x. So here this is the set q of x is false.